One day, Percy arrived at the junction feeling very annoyed. Due to a last minute arrival, he was late leaving the station. Bother! he groaned. I've probably missed Henry's connection. Oh, why did the taxi have to get a flat tyre? Can't be helped, said his driver. We'll just have to wait for the next train. As Percy waited impatiently, he noticed a rather large box sitting on the station platform. Nobody else noticed it. They were too busy making arrangements or trying to pacify annoyed passengers who were as grumpy as Percy was. Soon James came along grinning from buffer to buffer. Fancy a flat tyre to hold up a whole train, James said grinning. A splendid engine like myself knows a thing or two about keeping time. He puffed out of the station chortling to himself, leaving behind a very annoyed green engine. The guard blew his whistle and Percy was about to leave when he remembered about the strange box on the platform. Excuse me, sir, said Percy. What about the box? Is it for something? The guard saw the box and gasped in surprise. Why, I'll be, he said, and then told Percy that it was the fat controller's luggage. He's been looking everywhere for it. Well done, Percy. Percy was pleased. His driver helped the guard load the box into the cab and then he set off for the big station. The fat controller was both surprised and pleased as well. That night, Percy told the others about his day. Who would have thought that all of this silly nonsense for a box? Glad I spotted it. It takes a kind of professional to spot these things, you know. Toby just sighed, but Thomas couldn't resist getting into an argument. A professional, is it? He remarked. You were late to the station, if I recall. That's because a taxi had a flat tyre, retorted Percy. And besides, he went on, at least I didn't start so suddenly that I left my guard behind. Thomas seethed in silence as Percy went to sleep. He wondered about a way to pay him out. The next day, Percy went from station to station collecting and delivering passengers. He was very excited. At the big station, that afternoon, Percy was supposed to pick up the fat controller and other very important people. They were on a sightseeing tour, and the fat controller had promised Percy that they would take a short trip on the branch line. Percy beamed with importance. He arrived on time and waited while the guard went up and down the platforms. Five minutes went past. Then ten. Then fifteen. And still there was no sign of the fat controller or the other important people. Percy was becoming more and more impatient. Where are they? We can't wait all day. I've got other passengers to take down the line. Don't worry, said his driver. You must have patience. But Percy wasn't listening. He didn't want to have another encounter with James at the junction. At the back of the train, one of the doors hadn't been shut properly and the wind had blown it open again. One of the porters saw this and tried to close it, but the wind was making it difficult. He called over to the guard and together they forced the door shut. It shut with a loud bang that startled the guard, the porter and Percy who thought that the fat controller had arrived. About time, he said. Let's be off then, can't wait any longer. The driver who had also heard the door slam shut agreed. The guard looked up in time to see Percy leaving the station. He quickly ran to the train and was in time to get in.
no one noticed a frustrated and very worn out looking bus arriving at the station with the fat controller and the others waving furiously. Percy hurried to the junction where they were just in time to catch Henry. Henry snorted as he pulled away. Percy went to have a drink when the station master walked up. He told him that the fat controller was nowhere to be seen. That's odd, said Percy confused. I was so sure I heard the door close. So did I, said the driver. But if he isn't on the train, said Percy slowly, then that must mean that... At that moment they could all hear a honking noise. Bertie came rushing in looking very tired and annoyed. Out stepped the fat controller and the other important people. I appreciate you keeping to time, Percy, said the fat controller. But timetables are one thing, leaving behind your passengers is another. Percy said nothing. That night at the sheds, the others laughed when they were told what had happened. Thomas looked across to Toby. Leaving behind the guard is one thing, or even the luggage. But the fat controller? That doesn't sound very professional, does it? Percy felt quite sure that being patient was indeed a virtue.